Huh. Aubrey Edwards, Tony Schiavone, we bout to party, we bout to party, unrestricted, got the house now, we gon' turn it up, up, Hey everybody, welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of all of the wrestling. It is Aubrey Edwards here with my guest co-host Alex Eberhentes, and we have a phenomenal guest today for you. I am so excited. I said it before we started, and I will probably say it multiple times on this podcast, but like our guest is who I want to be when I grow up. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. I think we all do just because she's so hardworking. She's so great. Like she backs up everything she talks about. She is Maria Canellis Bennett. How are you, girl? How are you doing today? Good. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. It's of our course. pleasure. Yes. And you you do so much on screen. You do so much behind the scenes. I, I'm, I'm worried we won't be able to get fit this all into an hour, but we will try our best. Um, because yeah, and, and you're a, right, really and you're a mom, and you've got all this oh, like like do you do so much, so much stuff. Anyway, so uh, first off, you're one third of the kingdom along with Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. Um, like like tell us a little bit about the kingdom and kind of how this all came about. I know it's a very broad, big question, but let's just start there. <laughs> so the kingdom started back in, I believe it was 2013, but I could be wrong. Um, there's a lot of information in my brain, so sometimes dates don't always stick with me. I don't um, know what today is, so that's fine. <laughs> but that's it fair. all started actually with um, Matt Hardy giving me uh, his title at the time. He had had this title, and he passed it on to me, um, and it was the title of love. And um, this so is we, so great. <laughs> oh yeah, so we we ended up kind of starting out that way, and then. Uh, we were already working with Adam Cole at the time. And so the four of us all formed the kingdom. And that's where this comes from is because there was four of us that started at the very beginning. Although now I like to say, you know, four world championships between our group. Um, we could say that there's four in our family. So this, it still means a lot to us. Um, and so that group was formed um, way back when with the four of us. And then as people transitioned in and out, um, it became uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett and myself. Um, during that time, Adam Cole had gotten an injury, so he couldn't go and do the tours of Japan we were doing at the time over in New Japan. And so Taven got put into the group, which was great because Mike and Matt actually... Um, Mike had uh, Matt's very first match with him. They've Whoa. been wow ever. Oh, so, so this is perfect. It's, yeah, it's been a very long time coming of these guys working together. But also, funny story: Adam and Mike actually wrestled each other for the first time in Ring of Honor, and they got each other hired there. And then they had their tryout match in WWE, and they both didn't get hired at that time. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how the so, world works, like, huh? Yeah, it's wild because like our group and the kingdom itself, we've we've all known each other for so long. I worked with Matt Hardy back in WWE. I've managed him. I've managed Jeff Hardy. So like the the kingdom really is pretty broad. Um, the three current members, though, we've been together the longest. And it really is a family. Um, when Mike came to me about his addiction, the first person I called was Matt. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. Matt kind of talked me through everything. because I wasn't exactly sure, you know, do I call Mike's mom? Do I call my mom? Do I... But I knew that if I called Matt, he would just like run down like this is what you should do first. And like I sure. trusted him to be a really good friend in that moment. And he was and he was, you know, a good friend throughout the entire process and through recovery with Mike. So it's like, yeah, it's really my family it really is my family. Oh, that's so fantastic. And it's it's so great that you have all of these connections, obviously, through your many years of being in the business and the people, of course, you can call on, rely on, pick their brains mm -hmm. on. But you guys yeah. have really kind of forged your own um, really legendary career in Ring of Honor and now mm -hmm. here at AEW, which is so cool because it kind of comes full circle once again, right? It does, definitely. I mean... I'm I'm so glad that we're back a part of Ring of Honor. Um, I feel like every time we go out there, we're taking the spirit of Jay Briscoe with us. For sure. Uh, he really was, um, you know, him and his brother were the locker room leaders. 
Um, and I every time we go out to the ring and it says Ring of Honor on it, I can feel Jay's presence. And I always feel like we need to just like kick it up a notch, you know, because Jay always did. Jay always fought for the greatest match on the card, no matter what match that was, if it was the first or the very last. So it was like we we get that spirit when we go out there. And so for us to be back in Ring of Honor, back with a ton of the guys that we were working with in um, 2021, um, before you know it ended up getting purchased is it really is nice yeah it's it was wild because we had you know that those couple of years of just trying to figure out what exactly that was going to look like mm -hmm. i i on that topic i want to talk a little bit about uh super card of honor there was obviously the reach for the sky ladder match and that yeah. was a like Obviously, everyone in that match that was being advertised was like, oh, my God, this is going to be fantastic. The match itself was fantastic. But there was obviously that very uh, that very emotional aspect of Jay is no longer with us. And yeah. Mark has become such a big part of our locker room yeah. that it's like this. This is this is huge. Right. So what does it mean for you to sort of like you mentioned Jay and Mark sort of being the locker room leaders, but what do they mean to like you and Mike and Matt specifically? Gosh. So every time um, Mark would have another baby, because <laughs> he's got a billion, <laughs> you just, you hear, has, has you know, Oh, this is how they're doing this. And it was like, you know, his family was growing and it was also the ring of honor family was growing because their family is our family. And they would, you know, Britt would come and bring all of the kids and Jay would come and have the kids. And so, um, you know, to to have that particular match and I am still incredibly disappointed that we didn't end up winning just because, you know, what it meant to us and especially to Matt, because Matt was so close with Jay. Mm. They did tours down in Mexico together. Um, they were in Ring of Honor together for a bunch of years. So for us, that was heartbreaking. Um, but it was also, you know, it inspires you to do more. It inspires you to have a stronger commitment to your family and to your faith. And that's what we're taking with us moving forward. Uh, Mark and Jay pray every time before they go mm -hmm. out. And it's it really is praying to something bigger. And that's fighting for your dreams. That's fighting for your family. Damn. Yeah, that, that's so true. And, and Ring of Honor has always been such a tight knit group. Uh, and it definitely, you know, even back, when I was in it, it always felt like family. And uh, it was so special to be a part of that match. And, you know, I, I don't think I've told you guys, but it meant a lot to me, uh, not obviously just being out there with Lucha Brothers, but because of you, Matt, Mike, it just felt so special uh, mm -hmm. to be in that moment that, um, you know, I think, I think a lot of us are going to remember that match for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, but I want to pivot really quick and talk about what it meant to you guys to make your return here, or I guess your re-debut, if you will, in AEW on Rampage. Can you tell us a little bit about how you found out, how it came to be, and what it meant to you guys? Yeah, so after Ring of Honor closed, some of the first people we reached out to was AEW. Mm -hmm. um, because we've worked with so many of the guys that are in AEW, um, we see the growth, we see the potential from the outside, and it just was not great timing. And as you know, we worked in Impact, it actually was a blessing because we had only had one match where the three of us were all back together since before Mike and I went to WWE. So oh, we wow. only had that one match to like, oh, okay, this is this is what it's like, you know, when the three of us are together back in Ring of Honor. And then Ring of Honor closed. Mm -hmm. And then it, we really had to refine ourselves because while we were gone, Taven had this illustrious career of yeah. the Ring of Honor world champion, having these intense ma matches and being in Madison Square Garden, selling out Madison Square Garden. So there was all this stuff that Taven had done. And then Mike had started this brand new style of wrestling, and he's really interested in the pure style of wrestling and really that strong style, Boston strong style, as he likes to call it. So now we were different people. And I had had two babies at this point. So we were all very different people. And so coming back together, we spent our time um, in Honor No More and in Impact figuring out who are we as a kingdom again. So as we were figuring that out, you know, the goal was always to go to AEW as soon as the opportunity arose. And it did. And I won't give you too many specifics, um, but 
I will have to say that there were a couple of people that were really pulling for us. Um, people that I feel like, um, you know, they, they are, um, what it means to be veterans in a locker room and they are what it means to really, um, fight for those guys that fought for you. And like, so to have that, um, as you're coming in felt so good, but I also knew personally, um, that it would be, uh, there's only two of us, me and Brandy that have been in five of the top major wrestling companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's so that's huge. To, to have that, um, was huge. Like to me as a, as a personal thing, walking out on that AEW stage, that was, that was number five. And that yeah. was really, it's, there's only so many moments where you can like make history in wrestling. Right. So it's yeah. one of those, like, it's, it's hard to like, not think about it as it's happening. Yeah. It's, it's also great. Cause like, I know I make the joke a lot of times like, Oh, you know, nepotism is rampant in wrestling and we just all hire our friends constantly. But I feel like that's a really important thing because the people that are good, uh, others fight for. So it's mm -hmm. one of those like I I didn't I, I met you briefly when I was doing a little bit of stuff at WWE. But like as soon as I heard that Ring of Honor was shut down, I'm like, oh, we'll get them like <laughs> without even knowing you guys. I was like, there's you can't say AEW and the history of AEW without referencing Ring of Honor just of where all of our guys came from. So yeah. I'm really happy that we have awesome veterans that fought for you guys, because I think that's really important in not only giving people opportunities to make history, but also giving opportunities to like feed their families and shit. Like, how dope is that? It's, it's super important. And I, you know, especially, you know, a year ago and looking at all the tag teams that were in AEW, um, you know, everybody from the Young Bucks to Red Dragon to, you know, just Adam Cole and um, working with Roddy. And so, so many of these guys, um, we worked with, you know, we had these tremendous matches with the Briscoe brothers. Um, so it's, you know, it's almost like we're all getting back together again. Um, and I, I think that that's super important too, because you have a level of trust when you've spent mm -hmm. so much time with people, you have that level of trust of no matter what happens, we'll figure it out. And oh, I think 100%. that's really important, especially in a young company. It's it's definitely feels like a slow rolling family reunion. It's just like instead of one day in a backyard, it's just over the course of a couple of years. But oh, we'll yeah. get there. Oh, yeah. We'll bring no. the potato salad. We'll fucking pull it off. This <laughs> oh, is yeah. I mean, like I seen when I seen Mark Henry backstage the first time oh, yeah. in forever or when I when because I, I I've worked with him and I've worked with Big Show and uh, Christian. I did some backstage segments with in WWE, which were hilarious. It was with him and Edge like. So, so many of these guys I worked with over there and now we're all here. It's so great. It's so wonderful. So is this conversation. We're talking with Maria Canellis Bennett on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, we have so much more to talk about. Hey, it's Alex and Aubrey back here on Restricted with our very special guest, Maria yes. Canellis Bennett. Yes. Maria, it is so much fun talking to you. We're, we've been yes. so excited looking forward to this conversation. And one of the questions that I know a lot of folks out there want to know is, You've been coined the first lady of wrestling in Ring of Honor. How did that come to be? Oh, we were actually just sitting in my husband's parents' basement. And uh, his friend at the time said, what about being the first lady? And I was like, ooh, I kind of like that. And it's a bit of an homage to Miss Elizabeth because she right. was mm -hmm. called the first lady as well. Um, and I always, you know, she was such an integral part of the matches, even though she wasn't wrestling. And I think that that's important to be a real manager, not just, you know, for show. And I'm sure you agree with me um, mm -hmm. yep. when you're sure out do. there, you you want to be a part of it. You want to you know, do something for these matches. And so it was it was a bit of that. And at the time when I came into Ring of Honor the first time, there weren't a whole lot of women as a part of the company. So it was also playing off of that. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because Ring of Honor definitely wasn't, there wasn't a lot of you. So thank you for coming in and punching the holes in all those glass ceilings for <laughs> for the rest of us ladies that are trying to make a way in wrestling. Um, speaking of which, I just want to make sure we talk about this because there's so much to chat about and I don't want us to run out of time. But I want to talk about Women's Wrestling Army 
and just about how fantastic this promotion is, how you've created all of these opportunities for women, how you're giving them time in the ring, how mm. you're you're giving them like TV opportunities. Because the, the thing that I've learned so much, like when I go back and do an indie occasionally is like how different TV wrestling is from yeah. indie wrestling. And mm -hmm. it's just I, I don't think it's one of those things that you can really summarize too much. Yeah. So the fact that you're doing this with you and, and Bobby Cruz, like this is fantastic. So like, tell us about Women's Wrestling Army. So Bobby Cruz is my partner in Women's Wrestling Army. We started it about a little over a year ago. And it really is um, kind of like training camp for mm -hmm. these bigger promotions. And in a lot of ways, it's giving them the opportunity to have really fantastic production um, as well as great producers. Our producers come from um, Impact Wrestling, from WWE, also from AEW. We we are giving them that level of education of, you know, this is, this is what it takes to be on TV. And the bar is set super high, but it's also a um, no bullshit. Like, we're there to mm -hmm. work. And, like, we, we pump it out. We'll shoot 10 episodes in a weekend. And so it's like you don't have time to be um, to be worrying about other things. It's like, no, we're we're TV wrestling and we go, go, go. Um, and the girls are uber talented in their own right. I mean, several of them have already gone off. They're working at other places, especially AEW, Impact Wrestling. Um, and I think that, you know, having that level of confidence of realizing this is what it takes to be on TV um, is important. Because you you forget that when you're working the indies, uh, Billy's so funny, Billy Stark. So oh when she, uh, when she first came and worked with us, she hadn't really done promos before, and so it was like, no, we're gonna do promos. Everybody does promos. Everybody does promos pre and post match. We just do them because um, it's a great opportunity to just see what happens. Um, and she was very nervous, but mm -hmm. as the weekend went on, she got better and better at it. So it's like, you know, it's getting out of your comfort zone and just making sure that you're putting out some kind of products. So you have something to build off of uh, right now. It, Women's Wrestling Army is um, showing up every week on YouTube. We started from the beginning and now we're running through all 33 episodes. Um, and in that time, wow. we're also looking for, uh, you know, where we're going next. Yeah. And how often do you film? How often do you get together to do this? So every three months right now, um, because we no longer have our our contract with Pro Wrestling TV, we're looking for a new place for Women's Wrestling Army to call home. So I know where I would like it to be, mm -hmm. but <laughs> but it's all timing. I mean, exactly. with everything that is happening with AEW and with you know the growth that it's had so far, the time will come where there'll be an all women's wrestling show and hopefully we'll be that all women's wrestling show. Yeah, I mean it's it's just a matter of time seeing the growth, I know, just within like the AEW roster and like this is great because you need women who are have the opportunities, you need people who are supporting them and giving them opportunities to grow and I just love that you and Bobby are doing this. It's like it's like shimmer for the new era, right? Like you used to have these promotions where you go and now it's like this is where you want to be if you're a woman who's making a name for herself in wrestling. Yeah. And the, the women all work really well together, too. And that's another part of, you know, building a locker room, building a show that's based around mostly women is the locker room itself has to work well together. So mm -hmm. you have to have all the different styles, all the different looks, all the different categories covered because you want your show to be as diverse as possible. At the same time, women that work well together. And that's what Bobby and I really try to do is we want everybody to have the very best match possible. So we look at our card and we're like, OK, who is going to bring out the best in that other person, in that other group? So that is another thing that we really pride ourselves in doing. So I'm I'm curious, because uh, obviously as a promoter and a booker, you're looking at all of the various talent that are available on the indies like and you want to create those matchups like uh, Sky Blue versus Queen Aminata obviously was like fantastic. But those two girls are obviously like they're best friends. So they're yeah. going to have a good match because they have chemistry. So what is it you're looking for when you're trying to find women to book on a show? So it's a little bit of everything. Um, it's always you have to find it's like you're you're making a soup. So mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that soup, you want to have the veterans and the veterans that 
are ready to help the next generation. You don't want veterans that are still, you know, like, no, I'm the king of the castle. You want veterans that are willing to help the next group. Um, you know, I, I always talk about AK and Marty. They are fantastic mm-hmm. veterans. Um, they bring out the best in everyone they're in the ring with because they don't take themselves so seriously that people get scared. So every mm-hmm. match they have, I feel like it's bringing out more and more of the the younger talent. I'm also looking for a spark. So Miranda Elize, she's mm. she's spark. She when she comes out on camera, it's just like you just want to look. You want to see what that is, what is happening. Um, and then you have people like Trisha Dora, Missa Kate, um, that their footwork is fantastic. Like such good footwork can have a good match with anybody because of their footwork. Um, then you continue to go down and then you see another like, oh, she's very dangerous looking like a Janai Kai. Mm-hmm. And then you have a, oh, very, very scary in Maxi Impaler. Yep. So, and as you're putting this group together, some people are going to work, some aren't. Um, but I also, I, I go and troll everybody on Twitter and Instagram mm. and I make sure that <laughs> it's it's going to work and it all it all makes sense together. And then I also see who are, who are the friends, because sometimes if you have a shy person that is on the card, maybe you just need to bring a friend. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just need a support system. And sometimes sure. we do that. Sometimes that's what we do. And that's what it takes to get the best out of somebody. Um, sometimes like a holiday. Holiday is, you know, she is known for being this monster, for being the the strength. Um, but we put her with Maxie Impaler because Max needed to understand what it was like to be a holiday and to be mm-hmm. that monster, that beast. So you know, sometimes we have to make those matchups. We put Marty with Trish Adora because Marty I knew would pull something out of Trish. So, because Marty is full personality and like, oh my God, yes. Together. Um, you know, it just, it, I, you know, Angelina Love. Oh. Oh my gosh. She had that incredible storyline with Awesome Pong many years ago. Oh, yeah. So Angelina Love and Maxie Impaler, perfect combination because Angelina knew exactly what it took. And Angelina, by the end of the year of, Bobby and I running the women's division and ring of honor. She became one of our best veterans backstage because she just, she understands the industry. So, I mean, I, there's a lot of information there, but it really is. You make that stew and you make sure it's got all the right ingredients and um, you, you kind of hope for the best at the end of the day. Oh, wow. That's such, that, that's fantastic. I'm really interested in checking this out. And, and you said it's available on YouTube. Yep, it is. Yep, it's available. I'm also really hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> All that soup talk. I know. It's got you hungry, Aubrey. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, Maria, I want to circle back really quick because this is always something that I have thought that was just so fascinating as to how you got into the business and see where you started to where you are now. I just think it's so amazing, your whole story, um, which I guess really began back in 2004 in the Diva Search, right? Yep. You didn't necessarily win but you still got offered that job and then you made absolute gold out of it. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience, how that came to be? Sure. Uh, So I was a fan, huge wrestling fan. Um, I love the Hardys, uh, especially Lita. Um, And so I was a huge wrestling fan. And one night I was watching Monday Night Raw and there was an advertisement saying they were going to have this diva search. So back then it was dial up internet. If anybody mm-hmm. doesn't know what that means, just look it up. <laughs> I think we all just uh, dated ourselves. It was just like the slowest process of filling out this form online <laughs> to enter into the Diva search. And then you had to have three photos. Now, digital photos weren't really a thing at that time. So I had to scan the photos and then mm. be, to be able to do it was ridiculous. <laughs> so I en- entered online as a fan and. Um, I actually made it to the top 10 because I did jumping jacks and five inch heels and a bikini. So yay me. Oh, that'll do it. Um, I could not do that now. That would never happen. But (laughs) back then it was a thing. 
Um, I also called Jonathan Coachman and popcorn fart. It looked that one up as well. The rock called Jonathan Coachman a popcorn fart. They thought it was funny. So I ended up making it a little bit farther in the competition. So go through the diva search. Uh, Gosh, it was like boot camp. It was mm-hmm. really like boot camp. All of a sudden, I'm being hit with all of this culture that I had never experienced before. Wrestling culture back then was very different than what it is today. And so I go through that. I really wanted a job. Um, John Laurinaitis at the time was like, oh, call me in two weeks. So I called him in one week. He said, yep. call me in two weeks. I said, I'll call you in a week. And I continued calling him until he offered me a tryout. Went down Damn. to OVW, two week tryout with the Dudley Boys, um, and Lance was also down there as well. Uh, did that tryout, ended up getting a contract, and I was doing OVW Tuesday through Thursday, flying and doing Raw house shows Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday night Raw, Tuesday sometimes SmackDown, back in again to do OVW. So I did that. Um, from the get go. And that's really how I made my start is doing OVW and Monday Night Raw. Um, it was wild. It was wild. And back then it was the Wild West. You were constantly making sure that like you were on top of your game. I showed up to every show in five inch heels, tiny little dresses, like just trying to get someone to pay attention um, and put me on the show. And luckily, I had an opportunity to work with everyone. I mean, they made me a backstage interview. Actually, Paul Heyman made me a backstage interviewer. Um, I got to learn from that mastermind down in OVW when he was uh, booking the shows. Uh, Me and Punk at the time, we would go and uh, go before the show even started and just go through everything with Paul Heyman and really figure out how a show was put together through that experience. Um, and then, you know, from there, just uh, interviewing all the guys backstage, I was just a sponge. So they would be kind of going over their matches or whatever they had to do during the night while they're standing there waiting to be filmed for their interviews. And so I'm just listening to all this input from DX and from Randy Orton and uh, like all all the top names back then of Ric Flair and Tajiri and like Everybody back then, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock. So I I ended up working with all of them, and that's really my education. <laughs> I I love kind of like your your mindset and sort of the way that you talk about it. Like diva in, in nowadays is almost kind of considered like a derogatory thing, like yeah. for what uh-huh. they what it represented, right? Like the five mm-hmm. inch heels, the mini skirts, and whatnot. But the, I think the way that yeah. you approach it is so good and so positive. Like you're yeah. taking this opportunity, sure, and you understand what needs to be kind of promoted on TV, but you're moving it in sort of the the Maria way of I'm going to be a strong, independent woman and yeah. make this a thing. Was that sort of always your mindset with how you approach mm-hmm. this? Yeah, it was. I So I was, I'm thankful for it now, but I was pissed when they made me ditzy because mm-hmm. I I fought against that from the time I was young. My dad was very much um, old school. He was the king of the castle and the women were supposed to do the dishes and all this kind of stuff and be in the kitchen. And so I always push back against that. My dad's very different now, but back then he was very much that way. And so I was pushed back. So as soon as they were like, oh, we're going to have you be ditzy and dumb. And I was like, ah! it was like my oh, worst no. nightmare. It was my worst <laughs> nightmare at the time. I'm so grateful now because I because of that um, and and being that kind of character, I got to work with everybody because um, they could play off me. They could get their characters over because I was ditzy. Um but the whole time I had this bigger picture in mind and that bigger picture were, was to create more opportunities for women. I remember early days asking for more time in matches, early days asking for a t-shirt, early days like asking for all these things that we weren't supposed to get. I wanted to be on the cover of magazines. I wanted to do um, all of the the ads that the boys were doing. And gradually I was able to do them. I sat in Vince's office a number of times asking him for things. And that group of girls that I was with, you know, I think of diva as a very positive term in terms of wrestling. Because if you think about who was considered a diva, 
it was Mickey James, Beth Phoenix, Michelle McCool, uh, Kelly Kelly. Uh, there was Melina. You had Jillian Hall. You had the Bella twins. You have all these people that are still making an impact in this industry. We're all considered divas. So how can that be a bad word? And yeah. I personally, I think that, that, you know, it's starting to go back in that direction of, oh, no, these were the women that were fighting for more opportunities. And they were the ones that allowed things to get to today. Damn. I'm just like, Absolutely just so right. like fuck yeah, man. Like, <laughs> I'm going to go like on a march right now or something. Like, I'm just so like, <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I love it. It's it's it's. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's just so awesome. I am absolutely loving this conversation. I'm sitting here just like so inspired and whatnot. But I feel like I do that every time I sit down with you. So really now everyone else just gets to experience the day in the life of hanging out with Maria <laughs> Canellis. Oh, so great. This is a fantastic conversation we're having with Maria. Coming up, we've got more to talk about, including some fan questions. Alex and Aubrey back here. What an amazing conversation we're having with Maria yes. Canellis Bennett. Oh, my gosh. If you're not inspired after this unrestricted, then you don't have a heart. You don't have, you don't a, have soul. a pulse. Yeah. <laughs> you're an you need asshole. To get, you need to get checked out. Exactly. We're having so much fun. So, Maria, so thank much. you again so much for joining us. Um, we've got tons of fan questions here for you. Okay. Do you think you're ready yes, to answer sure. some? Yeah, of course. Oh, All right. This is a really good one we're starting with here. So, Ryan Slee wants to know, if you can induct another AEW female star into the kingdom, who would it be? Ooh, Ooh AEW. Mm hmm. Or I guess you could do Ring of Honor as well. Yeah, we're sure. Of, why not? We're sort of cousins at this point. We are cousins. So, so um, just because this was agreed upon by the group um, when we were trying to decide how we would move forward before the company shut down, uh, it was Miranda Alize is mm. who we're going to have uh, be our female wrestling counterpart. Um, but it didn't end up happening. But that's who it would have been. Damn, what a good answer. And I love that she's been like popping around Ring of Honor a little bit. It's like good to see her. Uh -huh. Well, she made it to the top two for our yeah. women's tournament. So like yeah. good to see her back. And she Very called cool. herself a veteran the other day. But really, she is one of the only ones from that <laughs> regime that's a vet. I mean, it's you've got uh, Mercedes and Willow, but that's pretty much it as yeah. far as uh ring of honor veterans right and it's it's veteran itself is such a weird term in wrestling oh, yeah. it's like how mm -hmm. do you define veteran uh -huh. right it's like yeah. well it's yeah. someone who's been around a long time well how long is a long time right yeah. like, true is it tied to experience like because i ended up on tv like my first two years in the business so it's like well you know where do we fall mm -hmm. here not not calling myself a veteran at all please don't shit on me oh, or that. like oh <laughs> stop it <laughs> but see that's what i'm talking about it's like how do you define this term right but just exactly. knowing that there are women that have been doing it long enough that have the experience that are giving that that knowledge to the next generation whatever it might be however old we might be um but yeah no i, I like that she she is totally a veteran she's awesome uh we have a question from Susanna. uh what would you like to see happen for the women's division in both either roh or aew Ooh, uh um, it's a tricky mm. I know what I would do, but right. um, I think I think I'd like to see some tag titles. I think that yes. would be huge. Um, I think we have enough women uh, in the company that we could do tag titles. Um, that was one of the goals that Bobby and I had with Ring of Honor was to have tag titles. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think another is to have an authoritarian uh, authority figure. Um, just to give, especially some of the younger women, something to bounce off of. Mm. Because um, if you have that figure, um, you know, whether you call them a manager or director or board of directors, like I was called previous to um, AEW, um, whatever that name is, doesn't really matter. To have someone that is more of the, the cornerstone for the younger women to start attaching their stories to, I think would be really positive. Um, I'd also like to join uh, Brit uh, against the outcasts. I'm oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, personally, that's just, uh, 
my feel on it, I think uh, it would be so much fun to play with them. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, so absolutely great. Yeah, that definitely is something that we, uh, well, we'll cross our fingers and, and, and hopefully put it out there in the universe. You never know what will happen. Uh, <laughs> I got a great question here for you from Notorious B-I-Z, who wants to know, <laughs> tell us about Outback Jack, the oh reality show that you were a part of. Before, I did not know uh, this. So pre- right before WWE, I actually did a reality show um, and it was on TBS. Uh, so it's funny. The iron. That You're <laughs> back. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. yeah. It's full circle. So it was on TBS and um, it was called Outback Jack. And the very first thing we did, we didn't know where we were going. We knew we were going international. We had no idea what country, what the show was going to be. We knew it was a dating show. That was it. So um, so we didn't bring any of the right wardrobe, P.S. Oh, of course not. Like, they had to give us stuff because we were literally skydived in to the outback um in australia and wow. i skydived before they gave us no lessons like no. we literally just get handed a jumpsuit like here you go and they gave you you know of course we had like a, a guy that was attached to each of us that was like the the professional right. what they were doing but i would still shit myself like well, where do you, <laughs> what do you do with your feet like yes we should have all broken our legs like yeah. because you're supposed to go through some training before you of do. Of course. Even if you're going with like a partner, you're supposed yes. to get trained. So we get skydived into the Australian Outback. Um, it was disgusting and terrifying because there's so many bugs and like it is just like every day you're oh, there's a tarantula on me. It was uh. insane. You're you're using like a porta potty the whole time you're there, and it's the same mm -hmm. one for a month, and it's just like oh, the bugs those build up. And yeah, and it wasn't because of the girls; it was because since it was sitting out there for so long, the, the bugs, bugs had all decided to come in and like make their nests. So it was just like, yeah, um, <laughs> it was. Awful. I so I you're supposed to check in your sleeping bag before you go to bed, but. They had given us a little bit of wine and I wasn't really, I was just like, I'm going to bed, blah, blah, blah. So I put my feet into my sleeping bag and <sighs> what do I feel? I feel just this no! uh... falling up my leg and, I'm like, <laughs> and I grab it and I throw it and I just see this black tarantula just crawling down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. <laughs> No, but, thank I mean, it was great because like I I had only been on, I think, like two or three flights before going to Australia. So my very first flight was out to Hawaii. Um, and that was when I was 19 years old. That was the first time I ever flew was to Hawaii from Hawaiian Tropics. And then like within a couple flights after that, it was flying all the way to Australia. Damn. Oh, my and God. And you had to jump out the plane. I did. <laughs> just sleeping with tarantulas, using oh, porta yeah. potties for a month. This is like, ugh. I don't. I don't even like like little tiny spiders in my home. Like as a yeah. vegan who loves animals, I'm like, fucking kill it. Like I, I just, oh my god, I would, I would cry. I would cry so hard. So I had to get over my fear of spiders because I, I was giving my daughter a bath in the sink. She was a newborn. She was like mm -hmm. maybe five, six weeks old. And um, I was home by myself. Mike was on the road with WWE. And so I'm giving her this bath. And all of a sudden, this spider that is probably about this big gets in the tub. And I'm like, oh. no, I, I, you, you just have to. And I just scooped the thing out and threw it outside. I was like, oh, this is... no. Yeah. So I had you got to those mom instincts. You got to like, like mm -hmm. protect your kid. Yeah. I was I was. Done. And I like touched fire the other day because kids were making marshmallows over the fire. And what? And my son had it on fire and goes towards my daughter. My daughter has no. blonde hair, and I was like, I just hit the fire because I was like, she's gonna light herself up. And he was, yeah. Oh my god, Freddie, no! Um, that's <laughs> just you, you throw yourself all of your things out the window. Protect. Oh my baby. god, you're super. Oh my god. All right. Well, on that topic, this is a nice segue. We have a question from LKW Artworks. You guys do a fantastic job of surprising your kids when you get home from the road. Do you have any funny or cute reaction stories from one of those returns? Um, so 
my my daughter is very emotional. She's a mm-hmm. very emotional child. And um, so I think the funniest is she doesn't know what to do with herself. So when we come home and it's like she wasn't expecting us, she doesn't know. So she runs away. It's like, <laughs> she'll run back and like, um, you know, she she gets very like teary and all of that. So I don't know if it's funny, but for for us, it makes us feel really good. Cause she just, she doesn't know what to do. Cause she has so much emotion when we come home. Oh. Um, my son will say things like, I'm going to jump on you. And <laughs> he loves to wrestle my husband when he comes off the road. And so Mike will be beat up, like, especially mm. after that insane uh, fight without honor match and come home and just be totally beat up. And my son will go, wrestle you and he just the whole time he's wrestling my husband is saying wrestle 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 (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh my god so great you're gonna have to write a book you've you've got quite a lot of stories it's in the works so yeah i want to do it right uh but yeah it's in the works for sure hell yeah well let me know when you release it i will be the first in line at your book signing thank you so this is an interesting question from bja what was it like to be sprayed down with beer by Stone Cold Steve Austin? Well, it wasn't actually beer, but it still smelled like beer because it was in a beer truck. Okay. So it was water. Uh, but it still smelled like beer. And I smelled like beer for like a week after that because <laughs> it was just... Um, but it was, it was so cool. He was so appreciative after. Oh, he comes up, Steve comes up after and he's like, you know, thank you so much. And like gives me a big hug. And I'm like, any advice? He's like, no, he's like, uh, stay more towards the middle of the ring. Uh, (laughs) But I was actually getting pushed. That Mm. came out so hard. And I was wearing this tiny little dress that I was like, everything's popping out. Like Mm -hmm. it was going to be me naked is what. So I'm like trying to like cover and like stand up. Um. But no, he was just so appreciative. So it was like, I felt very blessed working with him. Oh, my God. It's, it's, and I, Sam, I lo- you know, oh, my God. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I just I just love the idea of talking to story about getting sprayed down with beer. And you're like, I'm so appreciative of someone like that's uh, yeah. just like wrestling in a nutshell. Right. Where you oh, talk yeah. About the oh, silly yeah. Situation. No, I mean, I had, <laughs> no, jumped on my head by um, it was uh, um, who dumped milk on my head. It was Eugene and um someone else and like even that i was like you know thank you so much because it was just a cool moment awesome uh question from chris rains i did not actually know this uh but apparently you used to sing do you still sing so it's came up a lot lately because my daughter loves my songs and i have Mm. one uh that's called alice in wonderland and i think she knows pretty much all the words and she now wants me to sing um they also and this is probably another question she also wants me to wrestle so does my son mm-hmm. so mm. like, it's uh you get those those pulls like they didn't see that part of my life but they want to and they're interested so it's almost like you have to kind of redo it a little bit so that they can see it so yeah i don't know i've been thinking a lot about maybe coming out with another ep just for the mm. kids Wow. Well, what about having another match just for the kids? And that's the thing is like, (laughs) I, I truly felt like I was done. I, my last match I had was at WrestleMania and, um, it was after I had my daughter right before I got pregnant with my son. And, um, I really truly felt when I walked out, I was like, I don't think this is for me anymore. I don't think the Mm. rest part is for me anymore, but now because of the kids, I'm like, shoot because they want to see me wrestle and especially my son so i'm like well maybe maybe one more run wrestling so we'll see we'll see if it comes up if it comes up if it comes up i like it i also like just the idea of like realizing in that moment that like this huge moment like walking off a wrestlemania you're like okay i'm done like how (laughs) that's all wonderful i I said it to my husband as soon as i because he was waiting for me um when i came back around and um just I felt it. That was it. I still want to manage. I love man. Oh, I absolutely. The boys to, you know, get Ring of Honor t- tag team titles one more time. I want them to 
get AEW tag team titles. I want them to have singles run. Mike wants to do pure stuff. You know, Taven wants to do the world championship. Like, I want that for them. Um, but for me, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. Eh, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like you can do whatever you want. If there's you anything can. that I got out of this podcast, it's <laughs> mm-hmm. that. So I want true. There to be like ticker tape across the bottom. That's like a disclaimer saying she hasn't wrestled full time in 13 years. She hasn't wrestled <laughs> like it would just keep going. Of like, please excuse the mess. She will figure it out eventually. Like it just keeps going across. Like I will just tell Denise to, to keep popping that. up that lower third. Yeah, lower yeah. third like, on the show. Just... Thir- 13 years, guys. Had two kids since then. Yep. Yep, body kind of changes a little bit. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Well, and anyway, this was just a fantastic conversation. I was so excited when I had the little Outlook invite that said we had you on the podcast. I'm like, friggin' finally, this is just wonderful. I, I feel so inspired every time I talk to you, and I hope everyone who got to listen to this feels very similar because you are such an inspiring person, and I'm really happy that someone like you is paving the way for women like me and women who are in wrestling today who aren't in wrestling yet. Like just everything you're doing is so, so great. And I love you so very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you're an inspiration to the guys too. Yes. You just, it doesn't matter. You're breaking boundaries. You've done it for such a long period of time. So, you know, thank you for really paving the way for so many people and continuing to help out others because at the end of the day, you know, that's what uh, really great people do. Hell yes. I think it, I think it's really important to, to have that realization at some point in your career to say, okay, what is that legacy kind of look like? What is that thing I want to be left behind? Legacy always sounds like such like a, uh, a big word, but like, just what do you want to leave behind? And mm-hmm. uh, I think for me, like, as I watch these women succeed and do better and better women like Willow that we had in ring of honor and um, Miranda and Trish, and, you know, we've got uh, Roxanne over in uh, WWE and, you know, Chelsea green, who I worked with an impact. And again, in ring of honor, watching them is, is really the biggest joy I have in wrestling right now and watching them succeed and excel and like, and, and the women as well. I think that, you know, Darius with, sorry, if I'm talking for too long, but I think this is really important. Like someone like Darius who has had injuries and then he comes back and then his brother gets injured and it's like, Hey, what, where is he going to go? What is he going to do? And I feel like in the last, like, few months or even few weeks of working with him you watch him come out of his shell Mm -hmm. and you see what Darius is without top flight and that's just going to make top flight even better and going to make motherhood even better because now they know who they are in the group and they know what they can do with their group moving forward and those are the things that I think is so very important now in my life and when you can get to that point in your career to do that you can still be truly inspired because yes. if you're if you're so focused on what you did before and trying to keep up with the Joneses and all of that stuff, it makes you so miserable. Like you, you eventually have to, you know, have a broader look on life and a broader look on things. And um, I think that, you know, there's, there's so many people that can do that now moving forward as well. And I hope that that's what ring of honor continues to be. Hell yeah. And I'm so glad you said that because it puts a great little button on this interview. You can follow Maria on Twitter, Maria L. Canellis, and on Instagram, Maria Canellis. Of course, you can follow and listen to this podcast, new episodes every Thursday, Apple, Spotify, wherever it is you get your podcast. Check out the YouTube episode. Uh, they come out Mondays. Just hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. We got Dynamite Wednesday, Rampage TNT. Coming up soon, we got Collision on Saturdays. We're all over the place. What's all up? Over. I am all over. I am Aubrey Edwards here with my co-host Alex Abrahentes. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted.